Great, is that working? Cool, right. Let's go through it. First, we need to remember one thing. Um, when you're writing the essays, I'm just going to be um, reading out the points. I'm not going to be linking it back to the question. So at the end of each point, just link it back to the question for A or 2, yeah? Cool. So, two types of um, disruptions of biological rhythm. Shift work, jet lag. Shift work, what is that? When there's a rapid change in your exogenous zeitgeist, but that causes desynchronization yeah, of your circadian rhythms. In turn, causing a disruption of your biological rhythm. Now, this occurs in various ways when you sleep, when society is awake. Right? This causes um, a breakdown of internal and external cues. Yeah, and when you're awake, when society is asleep, like you're um when you're sleeping, for, for example, and um there's a lot of noise going on outside. Everyone's out. Everyone's working. Everyone's out playing. Whatever. Yeah. Um, this disrupts the melatonin pr production because you're asleep and then you end up waking up because of it. That disrupts your biological rhythm. Yeah. So that's detrimental. So um another thing, alternating shift work may cause a permanent desynchronization. Now, what that is is when there's um, when you're constantly changing shift work patterns. Like when you when you work in the morning and then you, you just automatically change into the evening, automatically change into the afternoon. You know, there's no set pace, you know, it's just not a gradual change, it's automatic just quickly. Um and uh, symptoms of that is, you know, there's reduced alertness. You get sleep deprived, you know, heart disease, your productivity is lowered as well. That's always bad. Now onto jet lag part two of AO2. Yeah. This is um when your circadian rhythm gets disrupted because of um travelling across time zones so quickly that the circadian rhythm doesn't meet the external cues in that country. Yeah. For, for example, if you travel to, I don't know, Dubai, it's three hours ahead, I think. Yeah, when you reach there, your brain will be three hours behind because you're back in England. Yeah. So um your mind will be playing games on you in a way because you're going to be wanting to sleep when it's at what um, you're going to be wanting to keep awake when it's late but everyone else will be asleep because your brain's behind if that makes any sense um, I've got my notes here by the way so it's not um, so yeah you end up having a sleepless day and a restless night a sleepy day and a restless night yeah you sleep all day and you're resting in the night because obviously you're Rhythm was disrupted. Good. Um, this is because the biological rhythms, we just can't keep up with the changes, you know. Um, now there's a thing called a dorsal SCN located in the hypothalamus. This is unaffected by exogenous zygivers. Yeah, it's just it's immune to it or something. I don't know. Um, do, 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 do. Now, the reason why um, this could be bad for you is it takes several cycles to synchronize. When it's left to your um, internal cues, your endogenous pacemakers, like the dorsal SCN takes ages to synchronize because exogenous zygivers is not, it doesn't influence the, the dorsal SCN. The dorsal SCN is unaffected, so yeah. Um, this could cause, you know, fatigue, insomnia, you know, mild depression, so yeah. Now, research has shown that the best way to actually cope with this is to follow the external cues. So even if you're mad tired, yeah, follow the external cues and you'll just end up, um, you know, your cycle will, will end up joining in with theirs, if you know what I mean. So if you're, like, if you're tired in the morning, stay awake until they go to bed. Because then, you know, it'll be the same. Now on to AO2, gold et al. Gold et al. You found that a non-fluctuating shift pattern was actually better than a changing one because the biological rhythm can adapt to one shifting pattern, whereas a constantly changing one is a lot more disruptive. So it's a lot more easier to adapt to um, one, to um, uh, a non-fluctuating shift pattern. Sorry. So yeah. However, weekends and days off affected the biological rhythm. So, so even if it was non-fluctuating, weekends and days off, you'd always have that long night and you'd end up change the biological rhythm again, so you know, that's just a little extra evaluation point. Barbara et al. found that a forward rotation shift pattern was less damaging. So um, this is a case of, so three to four days, this, this is actually the example. She, she found that if you work for three to four days a week, you worked in the morning, yeah, 
and then you you had a break for the weekend, and then next week you worked three to four days in the afternoon, and then the other, the week after that, three to four days in the evening. That was better, right? Because the um, because a gradual change was easier to adapt to rather than a sudden one. Um, however, um, again, weekends and days off affected the biological rhythm. Now, um, Reinberg he found that everyone has an individual biological rhythm. Yeah, he found that not everyone has the same um, uh, reaction. There's varied disruption amongst individuals right so he found that people who gave up on shift work had changing patterns when they were working in shift work their um, circadian rhythm got disrupted yeah but those who kept on working in shift work yeah they were um, their the rhythms were unaffected yeah this has a real world application yeah firms can re recruit those who are best suited to the time frame so if someone's a night shift worker you employ them for night time not in the morning Vice versa, yeah. So, Boyevi et al. Artificial light resets the biological rhythm. That's what he found. What he did was he shone bright light into on four groups, different brightness of light onto four groups. Yeah, on the group that the the brightness of the light was brightest. Yeah, he found that they their rhythm reset th the most. Yeah, yeah. Their reset were they their rhythm were most responsive to resetting their biological rhythm, yeah. Um suggesting that um light can influence your biological rhythm. This has a real good application. Because in the workforce they they can actually use brighter lights in order to keep the keep the participants no keep the workers awake and to prevent um uh, rhythms from being reset, yeah. Or to actually reset rhythms, yeah, because it keeps them awake. Good. That's another real good application. So, however, um, this was not real life demand characteristics, you know, laboratory volunteers, you know, low ecological validity, whatever. Um, however, um, it was in a controlled environment. Yeah, the participants were isolated, uh, so a causal relationship was established. I said earlier that a um, uh, ecological low ecological validity. No, I, th I think it had high ecological. Controlled extraneous variables, sorry, no, ecological validity, controlled extraneous variables, yeah. So, um, research had just found that melatonin could be a, a solution to shift work or, or jet lag. It was found that if they took melatonin at the time before bed, it, it helped them go to bed. Yeah. It helped um, uh, It helped to, um, it, it, it was a lot more effective, it helped to reset the biological rhythm, yeah. Uh, however, if taken at the wrong time, their rhythm got further disrupted. So that's always an implication. Now, Recht et al. R E C H T. He found that the baseball teams, when they travelled from west to east, they won only thirty-seven percent of their games. That was a phase advance, right? However, when another team travelled east to west, they won forty-four percent. That's a phase delay. This portrays that performance was affected. Um, performance affected uh, by the disruption of biological rhythms, right? However, um, this did not take into account extraneous variables, the, the team ability, they may have had a biased ref, ill players, um, weather, all these kind of things. Yeah. So it lacks internal validity and external validity because only sports players were taken into account. So um, it lacks external validity to, to the rest of, uh, of uh, society. Good. Um, IDA, uh, ethical, if, if we know that shift work causes negative effects, should it really be allowed... Um, should workers really have to force their workers to work at night time, to work from night in the morning? So if, if we know about the ethical concerns and the health implications, should it be allowed? However, if it, if it is not allowed, who will do the work at night? I mean, I used to work at Tesco at night shifts and they did most of their work stacking up the shelves at night time. Yeah, and they got a lot of the work done. If no one's going to do it, how's the work going to get done? You know what I mean? So... Someone has to do it. And another idea point, re reduction, is to focus only on one exogenous executive, but light, like bovine et al. He only focused on one. Um, it could have been social cues, temperature aff affecting. Focusing on one is way too simplistic um, in uh, biological rhythm adjustment. Additionally, it may be, um, uh, it's also reductionist because it could be psychological. Travelling in itself is very tiring. Very tiring. It could be that it could have been that you had a bad sleep the night before, maybe, or um, um, yeah, it c could be really 
psychological traveling and stuff. I've traveled a few times. It's very tiring. Very tiring. You, you could have had a bad flight or whatnot. So it could be instead of it being exogenous, like if it's external cues, um, uh, the actual reason for jet lag. Yeah, this is for jet lag. Is psychological reasons and social reasons. You, you do not sleep well the night before, and the um, plane journey was rubbish. You, you had a baby crying next year and you couldn't sleep on the on the plane example yeah now that's disruption of biological rhythms it's a bit longer than i expected um if you need more just let me know man because it's helpful for me as well and now my memory is running out but yeah